Hey guys, welcome back to the Some Ordinary Podcast. I'm Caleb. This is... <laughs> Mood <of> heart. <laughs> it's a good first attempt. We're going to keep that one in. Dude, you can use that one. I don't care. You went in, you had the full energy, and I was kind of taken aback. Hey guys, welcome back. Top 100 in Poland podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we're top 90 in the U.S. That's pretty crazy, dude. Yeah. We've got, you know, our beautiful co-host, Nux, here, by the way. We've also got our beautiful guest here, Coffee, who you may have known from my channel as well, too. I've done plenty of collaborations. We've dodged plenty of lawsuits, uh, Neo-style from The Matrix. You know, it was a fun... That was a fun two months. I'm going to be honest with you. That was like, that was the most hectic investigation work. And then as soon as you release it, it's also the most hectic. Man, I can't wait for the cease and desisting to hit. I know. You <laughs> keep waiting. And then, yeah, yeah. K comes in with a cease and desist, which I never figured why he didn't send you one too, but that was weird. Well, remember, he gave you a package deal, right? He said any of your co investigators. Oh, get that's, it. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he did mention whoever's sharing info with you. It's going to go down. Well, I mean,. Muda doesn't have the ten million dollar studio, I guess. Right, there is a lot to claim here. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot uh, to to lose here. That they, they saw me now, as an easy target. My first question: Is that real behind you? Is that real? Is that a real background? <laughs> come on, come on, Caleb, be respectful. <laughs> be, please, please, Caleb, have some respect. Okay, I'm I, a, I know I'm a guest on your podcast, but please, <laughs> do you think I would invent? The internet detective in the $10 million studio? I think not. So. Well, we were always wondering, do you have an NFT of your background available for purchase? My, no, this? Dude, this, man, hey. this <laughs> man's this man been recording videos in the metaverse before it was a thing. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah you, you could take Mark Zuckerberg to fucking case, I guess. I'm fun. pretty, yeah, I'm pretty sure we have an active offer. <laughs> active offer with him no he I, I actually don't like the way he's designing his metaverse like this big cartoon thing i actually think it'd be way cooler if it's like more realistic you know what i mean oh well, yeah he's sort of doing vr chat you know again yeah yeah and then pretending he invented it by like naming his company meta and stuff i don't know that's that's weird dude that guy has like stolen every good idea he's ever ever had it's crazy. Come on. Aren't you excited to join Meta, though? Aren't you ready to get your Meta Quest 2 on and, like, participate in the world of Meta? Not Mark Has Zuckerberg's he... Meta. Dude, this sounds <laughs> like it would he hasn't, suck. He hasn't even, like, shilled NFTs yet, though. Aren't you waiting for the Meta... Oh, I can't wait happening. for the Meta Twitter page, guys, to just be like, all right, guys, we just joined the Bored Apes Yacht Club. <laughs> now we're going to shield you this $300,000 monkey. Can we talk about that? What's going on with the Bored Apes? Oh, well, there's... Uh, I mean, there, there's a lot to go with that nuclear fallout at the moment. So I, I know that it's basically the new CryptoPunks because I feel like with NFTs, it's like you have CryptoPunks or like you have like one NFT project and then it gets like too ballooned up and no one can buy into it or like you can't convince any other idiot to jump in and spend like half a million on your you know crappy crypto punk so now it's like oh what board apes yacht club guys okay let's fluff that up it's and affordable like, it's only two hundred thousand dollars for yeah. a picture but when it gets to half a million then it's going to be another project you know it's like join in guys here's you know i saw desperate ape wives i saw crypto like funks not punks but funks this time for whatever reason so it's like they have a million of these projects that are minted all the time stick dicks bro i, stick I dicks cannot is huge. that's going to be a huge project it's like, huge. I'm in deep with right. stick dicks. Trust me. Yeah, I've got a few. I've got. I was gonna say. I Wait, mean, did you actually buy them though? Like, no, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. No. no, I didn't. <laughs> I still want that little kid one. There's like a little kid one with his dick out. I, I shouldn't know, say man. that. We're, we're trying to get ads. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Crap. Yeah, G Fuel just <laughs> left the chat. <laughs> yo, yo, the internet here, is man. so yeah. messed up these days. Did you see that Pokemon clip floating around? Which one? The one uh, Pokemon basically says, "Oh." You know how I know I'm a woman in my 20s? When I see a little kid, and it's just, he's just so cute. His cheeks are supple. Supple's okay, a weird uh, word. Wait, 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 wait. We but got to like, give me a link like to like that. Baby fever. I saw yeah. the clip yesterday. One of the commentary boys retweeted it and asked, well, I, can't, I can't say that either. Never mind. <laughs> you know, you just find it <laughs> What? Wait, if it's good enough, oh wait, it is Twitter. If it's good enough, yeah, it was for bad. It was, yeah, it was if you bad. say good enough for Twitter, good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Was it a? Was it a Gary V level tweet yesterday? Like, uh, <laughs> it wasn't as creepy, but it was very direct, and it had to do with Pokimane and her love for kids. Oh, so, dude. Yeah. I mean, so, like I, here, for example, I think that that's just ridiculous. Twitch chat needs to freaking wake up and look at real life. It's okay to think little kids are cute. Okay. I agree. Maybe calling them supple is a weird terminology. Yeah. yeah 
that is bizarre. <laughs> she could have looked at a thesaurus beforehand and yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. supple. <laughs> you see the synonyms to supple, and it's all like. <laughs> I can't say that either. Those <laughs> supple <laughs> cheeks. It's like, no, don't I do just it. can't stop. She should have she she just been like, oh, kids are cute, done, simple as that. I mean, you know, kids are cute, well, right? I mean, like, crap, but... She went on, like, this whole long rant about how, oh, his parents aren't even looking, I could kidnap him. Like, but anyway. Oh, that's... I anyway. don't get... I don't understand how you can do that on Twitch, though, you know? It's like... I mean, how... I just think that's, that's streamer humor. You gotta, like, be entertaining the entire time, and it's like, oh, I'll, I can say that now. But it's like, you don't think what you're saying before you say it. Well, they have like 30, how many, how many viewers do you have live, right? Like 40, 50,000, and then all of a sudden you're saying dumb shit like that, and it immediately is clipped? Like, come on. Yeah, you have to know everything's going to get clipped like that. Yeah. 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 It's all going to go on live stream fails immediately. Like, you, you, as soon as you say something naughty or wrong, it's immediately on yeah. LSF, and everyone's just like, Reposting it, tweeting it, sending out the streamable links. It's just like, or, yeah. what are or, you going to do? Hear me out. It's part of a massive Rick and Morty sized brain plan to get more eyeballs on you for something that legitimately doesn't really even warrant criticism. I was about to ask this actually. Do you think there are, there are streamers who like sit up at night, like, how do I get on LSF? Oh. What Absolutely. do I say to get on LSF? It's made oh, sure. Sure. I think XQC, like, his that, yeah. career was literally built off of LSF. I was LSF. gonna say, like, all the times where he's he's played those, like, old little horror games with little, uh, scantily clad women, and he's gotten, like, two-day bans or whatever, and he finds it, he's like, oh! And then that, that's just, like, an LS, uh, LSF clip on, like, the front <laughs> page. Yeah, so smart. Yeah, that, that was Oompy's French-Canadian accent, by the way. Oh! Oh! <laughs> my, my, my favorite XQC moment is, like, when he's just doing animal, like, he's, like, trying Cheeto. to figure out which... Yeah, that's my favorite XQC yeah. moment. Cheeto. He's, so he does, like, animal, like, he, he does, like, animal, like, identification, and he's just sitting over there, like, he sees a cheetah for, like, five seconds, and you literally, <laughs> through the video, can hear the, like, gears turning, and he's just like, Cheeto. I'm like, oh, well, he's close. <laughs> no, no, I, I think he's he trying. calls every, like, he has six <laughs> words for every one word most people say. So when he sees an animal, ah, hyena, cheetah, spit chicken. No, oh, he's, he's, I mean, it's what got him to, like, what is he, like, number one on Twitch earners or something? Like, he was he number one or two. Number one streamer. Yeah. Yeah, he he's was not, like, I mean, wild. I just saw his, like, McLaren, like, I mean, you like, gotta respect day. that, man. That man has the capability to react to at least six videos a day, and I think he deserves all the respect. He can You're so him. burned on the fact that you literally have to feed the Twitch economy. Just take it, Just okay? Take <laughs> it, dude. No, I'm honored when he reacts to my. There videos. is this funny trickle about? down content economy where it's like, it's like trickle down economics, but you know the Twitch streamers make all the money. Where there's like primary source information, then YouTubers condense it into a video, and then the Twitch streamers react to the content and uh, upload it to YouTube. I mean, I feel like it's even funnier, honestly. I think it's it starts off with a few Twitch streamers saying a few stupid things, and then the bigger streamers reacting and putting in their two cents. <laughs> then the YouTubers make videos about the streamers' reactions to the other streamers. Then the streamers react to the YouTubers making videos about themselves reacting to streamers. It's the weirdest symbiotic effect of each other, though. Like, in the end of the day, we all, like, Twitch streamers need YouTubers because there's there's only a few ways you can go to the bathroom and eat food without completely boring <laughs> and, like, pushing away the audience. And we need Twitch streams because at the end of the day, like, I remember, because this saved the kids, right? Like, when we, because Coffee Makes is, like, 20-minute great video, and then I make, like, an hour-long, like fucking find the dot video you know what i mean like Banger. i'm just sitting over there for yeah so like i'm sitting there and I, you like people on youtube have like this weird mentality where they think oh the video's an hour long oh it must have taken you an hour to make it oh, yeah. i wish yeah, i wish I that. so we post this video and like dude immediately so it goes on lsf for whatever reason the whole save the kids stuff was hitting live stream fails i have no idea why like i saw it on the top lsf like my video and i was like makes no sense this wasn't a live stream fail this is a financial fraud yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too juicy it's though it's too fails. juicy it's it, save it the is. kids i know and then Every fucking streamer. So that yeah. are watching Coffee's video or it's my video. No, you're right. No, dude, I, I love it when streamers react to me. I mean, it's like, I like I don't mind it. It's actually, it's good for me. It's good for them. It's good for whoever. Yeah, um, I like it when they share it around, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I love it too. It's just kind of hilarious, the, the whole concept. I mean, like, you know, you come across a lot of streamers who, like, they understand the concept. So, like, they actually have, like, a fair amount of sense to pitch in and it's worth hearing what they have to say. Like... 
I'd love to hear what Pokimane has to say because Pokimane's like a, you know, boss girl, you know? She's like girl boss or whatever the hell they call yeah. that. She's like a full businesswoman. So it's like, I remember when the whole Save the Kid stuff happened. It was like she read the, the like, Face Clan, like, mention, like, when they first posted their, like, you know, tweet or whatever talking about. Uh, we don't, so these partners have been suspended and banned. And she's like, how much money do you need, right? Like, I was like, that's true. How much do you need? <laughs> like, at some point, everyone involved in this entire situation was a multimillionaire. I'm sure there was a few of those people that were like, you know, it was, I, w I don't want to say bottom rung of the ladder, but like, you know, they obviously weren't as well off as some of the higher board members, you know, some of the higher players, but like, at some point, how much do you need, right? Like, it, it, would you really be willing to risk your online persona and career over that? Just in case you were asking me, I would say no. The answer is yes for a lot of them. I feel like a lot of people on YouTube don't realize that um, retirement and career dying are two different things. Ninja's made hundreds of millions of dollars like through Mixer and all that stuff. So now that he has 10,000 viewers, you have people talking about how his career is dead. No, no he he's, won. <laughs> he's chilling, dude. He, 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 he won. did what yeah, everyone wants good. to do. He won at the internet. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm just, I mentioned it because I saw a video just yesterday. Of, I, don't, I don't remember the guy's name. Sunny something. He does like Sunny one V2. of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that guy. So he did Ninja's career is dead. And he goes on this whole, like, he, he like calls it an autopsy. It's like, now that Ninja's dead, we can see why people hate him and why he's hated by everyone. And I was like, what? I don't think I met anybody that like actually hates Ninja. Like we think he's yeah. We think he's done cringy shit. He's goofy. But, like... Yeah, he's cringy, but <laughs> hell yeah, whatever. He's wacky. I, yeah, but I he's mean, he's a legend for streamers, I feel like. I'm not not even a real streamer and like I I feel like he paved the way for a lot of like those big deals. He paved the way for mainstream artists to partner with streamers. He legitimized streaming in a way that hadn't been done. Like when Drake yeah. jumped on that li that live stream with him to play Fortnite, that was a huge moment, like historic. I feel like only certain creators ever get to do that. Like Ethan Klein did that with his fair use thing. He did that with his Drake thing, Mixer. There's moments where a certain creator will push the boundary for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And no matter what else they do in their career, they'll always have that where it's like, you helped everybody out with what you did here instead of just like it wasn't just for you or whatever well it's like gaming works too right like i know we crapped on face clan uh, we were investigating them but like face clan paved the way i think in a lot of ways for mm -hmm. esports organizations because when i heard they hit the you know nasdaq they were billion dollar valuated i'm like that's huge you know for any esports organization right like Sure, you look into the, you know, I'm sure there's, like, a lot of stuff we can talk about regarding yeah. it. But at the same time, it's, like... It's a huge win. I think it's it's a huge win. Like, it legitimizes esports gaming, right? Like, it legitimizes, like, this industry that we're in. Like, no matter what, you know, those successes, I think, are successes for all of us. And it's, it's the same thing with, like, Ninja, right? Like, you see him at Times Square. Yeah, you can laugh at him for fucking <laughs> trying to floss, but... <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, but do it with me. Oh but, like, he did amazing. it, though. Like, he flawed. He got that to go amazing. in front. Yeah, he was doing it. <laughs> he tried. He, he did it for the it, gamers. <laughs> and he single-handedly revived Ligma. He did. And it's, like, the, a thing now. It's been a thing ever since 2018 True. when he first got Ligma'd. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, it's, pop up. it's pretty impressive. I mean, yeah. th there was that whole stigma article recently. Did you see that, Oompi? Stigma what? article? What? Stigma yeah. nuts on your chin! Oh, oh, my God. See what well, I mean? It's I still alive. That. It's kicking. All thanks to our boy, the Blue Man. He is. <laughs> yeah. He really is. We should get him on the podcast. We should. Yo! <laughs> Yo, dude, I'm Yeah, so we should get him flossing here. <laughs> I would fucking do it with him, bro. <laughs> ninja, if <laughs> you're watching floss. this... Tell him, Caleb, finish that sentence. Yeah, what, <laughs> you, what if he is watching this? It was hypothetical. I flossed with you. I've done it before. I yeah. mean, I think that it's pretty impressive because I think we're like the biggest ninja appreciators at this point. When I watched that video talking about how his career is dead because everyone hates him, I felt so bad. Yeah, I, I don't... I mean, it's... That, that's the weird thing about commentary side, right? Like, I know that if I ever make a video on someone, like, even when we did Tech Lead, like, you know, when we talked about it, I was going in there with, like, the nicest of intentions, you know, I was like, I hope the best for this guy, I guess. But man, yeah. this million token is shit. Have you been following the million token? Like, have you seen how bad it still is? Oh, Bye. tech leads token. Bro, it's... I know. On, I know. I watched, but token. here's the... I actually want to know y'all's take on this. There's been an interesting effect that's happened. So I changed... My channel's always been sort of about frauds and scams, but I shifted 
from these guys who were selling these like get rich quick courses over to crypto. And there's been w- mostly the same, like a lot of it's the same few differences. You got to learn the blockchain and stuff. But one of the biggest differences is that when I talk about like a coin or something, usually previously it was just the guy scamming that would get mad. Now crypto does this weird thing where it quickly creates these communities who are all incentivized to make their thing like super valued. So if you ever criticize it, if it's true or not, everyone freaks out and they go, oh, dude, this guy's fudding. This guy's doing this. And they like rally and they get like super angry. So it's like, yeah. you know, 10,000, 20,000 people who are pissed at you. You could be completely correct about it. But it's like in their eyes, you're hurting their financial future. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, that's not my intention. I'm just trying to help other people from getting involved in this. So it's this weird thing. Like, is that good that we've tokenized everything? I mean, like, I love crypto. But to me, it's weird that like a lot of our new communities are like crypto communities. And it's basically a cult mentality of like, well, we have to all pump the bags all the time. We got to, we got to get the value up, dude. We got to get more people involved in this. I still have people from that million token, like discord just message me. It's like, can you help us out? Can you make a video? Can you like promote? I'm like, dude, I don't understand. Like you're the negative attention that I provide doesn't actually like pump your product. Okay. Like it just makes people look at it as a joke. Yeah. But I like, I think the problem is it's like we live in a time where in the last year or two, it, look, I, I know like some people like to live in fairytale land, but like things financially in the world right now are pretty bad. You know, like we're looking Overall. at inflation. We're looking at like things are getting pretty hairy. I don't want to like mm-hmm. scare anybody. I want to fud people. But like this is my job. You know, this is like like this is what I this is how I earn my keep. Right. Like on a personal level. So it's like when I see the back end of like the financial like, you know, system that we have. It's bad, but like, you got to think about it. People are losing their jobs. People like, we don't have, like, I I assume none of us have to worry about like, oh, can we make our mortgage next month? Right. But it's like, that's a reality for a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people have to sit there and be like, fuck man, I don't have money for next month. I don't have money for food even, but it's like, do I play the lottery, which has like no chance of me winning? Or do I play the lottery with stick dicks and do I just make money that way? And yeah, you know, it's whatever. So uh, I would like to provide my input on this whole crypto thing because I didn't have any, I, I invested in it in 2017 and left it and like right before it kind of got big. So it went up and then obviously went very far down and then it's like kind of back, uh, Mm-hmm. with Bitcoin is like substantially higher, whatever. What, what was it? What did it peak at in 2017? I don't even know. Like 19,000 or something like that. No, I think it's a bit higher than that. Was it? Well, I whatever bet. it was. Yeah. And I got into it again early this year and like followed all these people on Twitter and everything. And it's just like the, the, all these people on Twitter who are like the crypto guys and the people who you follow for, for advice or for, for, for tips and tricks, they're, they're like living Wojaks. They're literally <laughs> like these just machines that use copium to just exist. It's crazy, dude. Like they, I've never seen anyone be able to take so many fucking L's and then just pretend that they've never taken an L in their entire life, dude. It's sickening. It really is. It bothers me a lot. And that's why I just like, I have some crypto. I do not have a, like a substantial portfolio by any means. Mm. Um, and I've dabbled in some shit coins. I made 250 grand in one night and lost it because I didn't check it. All right. Mm. That's why. Because I didn't fucking check it. Okay. I literally made 250 grand. You know that? Oh uh, should I even talk about that ass coin or whatever? Sure. Go ahead. I, I mean, put like 500 bucks in I want to hear the story about how I, you fucking I, yeah, wasted dude. a quarter mil. I, and you can so ask people around me because I was like, I think it went up to 250 grand. And it was at like 90 the next day, 90,000. And by the way, my initial investment was like $5,000 or something like that. And it's, that's to all of my crypto. And then I put like 500 bucks in shit coins and then it went to 250 grand uh, for the ass coin. And then it went down to 90,000 in, in the morning. And then I was like, it'll probably go back up. No, no, no it, it won't. It won't go back out up. of it. And the funny thing I is didn't, you probably I, couldn't I just, even sell it. No, no, I couldn't have. I couldn't have. The, the liquidity pool is just non-existent because people just go whoosh, yeah. as soon as they possibly can. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's crazy though, because of like the amount of hope that it gives you, but it's all just like, it's like a distilled version of the worst type of capitalism, but in a way easier and faster way to make those transactions that you can just steal people's money. Oh, of course. I mean, that's the beauty of no regulation crypto. And (laughs) 
when I talk about, like, oh, crypto should get some regulation, you know how fucking much it pisses some people off? They're like, no, oh, yeah. the government shouldn't get involved. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, why shouldn't they? Because I'm running Squid Game token, and I don't want to get caught. I'm like, okay. <laughs> no, I mean, those 4X. people don't understand that, like, honestly, the mass adoption will never happen when your grandma gets on, tries to use crypto and she gets scammed, right? Like, yeah. you, ha you have to make it safe for people who can just come in with absolutely zero knowledge like my father-in-law was just uh oh, I don't know how much I can say but I can tell this story whatever he's not going to watch. He basically he texted me he goes <laughs> oh he goes he goes hey we're top 100 on iTunes. I, I thought dude, you were going to say whatever I can tell this story. <laughs> he goes, Hopefully he's got no friends in <laughs> Poland. He's find this. Well cuz he's like he's like don't tell this but he was telling me not to tell certain people. So technically I'm sure they're not going to watch either. All right. Anyways, father-in-law texts me he's like hey I know you're into crypto. Have I lost my money? He had sent a transaction one time and then he he wanted to sit it to the same place so he just he just repeated the transaction without realizing that the wallet for where he was trying to send it had changed and so he's like have i lost my bitcoin and i was like well yeah let me look it up and yet he had like lost like i don't know grand two grand three grand and i was like yeah it's like gone and he was he was just like kind of it, it like blew his mind he's like wait can i call coinbase and i was like no coinbase isn't gonna help like they're not gonna refund you for sending to the wrong address and it's like there's no way for people who are like older to mm -hmm. to get in without getting burned. And it's never going to hit mainstream unless regulation comes in and goes, no, nah, you can't do this. You have to do this. You have to make sure people don't get scammed. You have to make sure people don't get defrauded. And I am into crypto, but like for me, not only for scams, but also to see mainstream adoption, like I want regulation, but it's not just so I can see bad guys go down, but it's also so that like everyone can use this tech. Right. And be safe and not. Yeah step on their own feet and shoot themselves. Yeah, shoot people take it for toes. granted that like if your credit card gets stolen, you could just call your bank and they'll refund mm -hmm. you. But like, it's not, uh -huh. it's not your money. If yeah. that wasn't the case, like it would be much more scary and stuff like that. They put those safeguards so you don't feel freaked out about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's also like, I think the point of difference is I don't, I mean, we're not, I'm not using crypto for any nefarious purposes. I literally have it as a store of value. Like, well, this is before I sold off my crypto holdings, but like I had it as a store of value and it's like, I would use it to literally buy and sell, like trade and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I pushed out of it is that like, I thought by now with how much we heard about Bitcoin, like the closest thing of value that you could have bought for a while was like a Tesla, you know? Like you could give it to Elon Musk and you could buy like a Model S or something. If you, if I can't use this currency to, you know, fund my house, fund like actual tangible assets, then it doesn't serve me any purpose, you know? It's like, I tell people, I'm like, I have more value in like USD or any, or any like fiat currency because I can use that. Like I can go to the grocery store and buy like food. I can't do that with crypto, okay? I, I, right now, there's no tangible way for me to do it. I can't go to my bank and tell them, uh, fuck the void check. Let me give you a void check for my crypto account, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Siphon my mortgage out of that one. I can't do it. What's your wallet? And, yeah, it's like, <laughs> they, it's like, and that's the thing. You need regulations before any actual financial asset is going to be like, it's going to intertwine. But until then, the only thing this stuff is used for is like, spend 600 hours on Ubisoft's crappy Ghost Recon game. We'll give you a fucking crypto NFT and, you know, do with it what you will, I guess. Did y'all see Keanu Reeves' reaction to NFTs? Yes. No. Oh, my God. It was no. so... Oh, my gosh. How have you not oh seen this, God. Muda? No, no, yeah. no. I haven't it's crazy. seen it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so he was being asked questions about Matrix Re uh, Resurrection or the new movie coming out. And the guy asked him about a partnership that they did with Unreal Engine. I, I know you've seen that. It's like this insanely yeah, yeah. detailed city. Well, they Very sold good. NFTs with that for like 10,000 or 100,000 NFTs of like human avatars, whatever. So the guy was asking, you know, Keanu, he's like... So like when you think about the concept of digital scarcity and things that are, you know, they can't be copied. And Keanu Reeves goes... That are easily reproduced. <laughs> well, but they're not the same, right? And then he just starts laughing like a hyena. Yeah, like a like the Joker, like a jackal. As, <laughs> Damn, it's crazy. As the interviewer goes, but it's, it's the not the same, right? It's not the face. same. And then Keanu's just laughing at him. Yeah, it was it was awesome. <laughs> it was a great clip. It was so oh good. Oh my god, I just I, it's all in the news right now. I like entered it. Keanu Reeves thinks NFTs are. Just... <laughs> it's pretty funny. Dude. Oh, that's great. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Well, it's funny because you know, like, in, in NFT people worship It's not about the Keanu. money. It's about sending the message, okay? If any movie could have done NFTs, it's probably Matrix, though, isn't it? And he still yeah. laughed at it. Jesus. Yeah, they, well, they're still doing it, I think. I don't think, I don't think they got the likeness of 
Keanu, though. I think they basically did it mm. just on their own or whatever. With the- that guy's sage and why I, w- I can never expect him. Did you hear about the NFT? I think there's like a lawsuit with somebody that tried to flip an NFT. I'm trying to make a mm. sure about it. But because uh, I think that I have to like really look into it. I was hearing about it yesterday before I went to bed and this guy like apparently tried to flip one of these NFT deals and like he got sued and it has something to do with the fact that NFTs aren't a transfer of copyright. It's like even if you if like you sell like a board apes like somebody could jump right. in and say you sold their copyright like it de- it depends some projects will sell their copyright with the nft you can like oh, build it in give it an e-signature most, i guess yeah most do not one thing that i found interesting was nfts don't actually get you the the picture no it's a hyperlink literally a hyperlink to the image file well do you, do you guys know about what? the nft bear, yeah, right? so i don't you know, know my, i don't you, own my stick dicks did y'all know no you don't you own the link to it no, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing, Are here's the crazy me? thing, dude. Check this out. So because of that fact, the implication is this. The guy who owns that file can switch out the file if they want, if they do it carefully. So this has happened where people have bought art and they've switched out the picture for a picture of a rug. You got rug pulled with an NFT. This almost seems like it might be a scam. Literally. <laughs> I don't know, but I'll still invest in it because I'll be a millionaire overnight. <laughs> I saw Face Banks. He, he made a TikTok on it. He made $8 million this year. He did? That's what he I, said on TikTok. I, I don't. I, I mean, look, I don't doubt it. He's like in the NFT. And that's the thing. Like, he's got the money to get into the NFT stuff. Like, yeah. ironically. So it's like if he dumps get in. a lot like, of money. Well, if he, if he dumps in like a few million bucks, it's like a. It's a drop in the bucket. Let's be honest here, okay, for somebody in that. To, but, like, that's the ideal customer. That's the guy the NFT mm-hmm. bros want, you know? Yep. It's like Logan Paul. Dude, have you seen Logan Paul $600,000 crypto? I, I saw his $2,000 crypto. Yeah, I, I saw it when he bought about. for a lot and it was worth nothing. I mean, obviously. But. They'll be like, how many of these crypto, like, punks actually trade, you know? It's like, that's the funniest thing. It's like, they get bought, sure, for, like, I mean, I guess they're speculated to be worth, but who's buying them for, like, half a million, 600, 700,000? I'm not. I'm sure most people aren't, but, like, whatever. Yeah, I think we're going to see some really interesting things in, like, uh, the coming months of people wash trading. I mean, they're already doing this, but I think it's going to get a lot worse. When pe- Do you guys know what that is, Nux and Caleb? No, sir. I'm a fool. So, wash trading is um, where... Let's say I have a crypto over here. I take this wallet, I pump it with Ethereum, I make sure it's disconnected, and then I bid on my own project, sell it to myself, and get the price history to be way higher than what it was, and like show interest, basically. Show the fact this is trading. So that's a wash trade. It means nothing's really happened, and I've just faked some price history to try to manipulate people. And so now, just a one-to-one is easy. So like, if I'm just trading from this to this, that's kind of easy to catch. But what if you have a circle of like 20 accounts that keep trading around the NFT for like ever greater amounts of value, and then you do that across a profile pick collection of like 10,000? You can quickly. I mean, I'm get... sure that this is already being done. Yeah. Right? Oh, a hundred percent. It's just hard. It's hard to prove, but I think it's going to get much worse. Didn't someone sell a CryptoPunk to themselves for like five hundred million dollars yeah. or something? Didn't yeah. That happen? Yeah. We. we guy's a genius. That, yeah. yeah. With with actually no money, he never had the five hundred million. He did something called a flash loan. So there's a thing on eBay that it's like called shill bidding or whatever. That's the same thing as this, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Where you create accounts and then you just bid and then you just like. Yep. Well, huh. it's that That's scene so from weird, dude. you. Got, you guys watched the movie Uncut Gems, right, with Adam Sandler? Mm-hmm. You remember that Uncut one scene Gems. where, like, yeah. <laughs> you remember <Sorry>. that <laughs> one scene where he goes to the auction house and he brings his homie there, and it's like, all right, sit there and just like bid higher and higher and higher, just so he's like trying to get the one guy to like, uh, who's it, like the the Celtics player or whatever in that movie, mm-hmm. to like bid an amount. And he screws up because he over he like blows it over. He goes over the bidding more than like some actual person would trade, and that's the end of the shill bidding. That's exact. It's the same thing you see in like that retro gaming circle, right? It's like I have this copy of uh, I don't know, like uh, Legend of Zelda, boys, on the Nintendo Switch. This is suddenly worth uh, a cool seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, yeah. so somebody line up and buy this. True. That's what it is. You know, it's true. That's that. That's the market that we have to hit with. I feel like we've come across so many like. And uh, by the way, this second episode is like. I'm sorry, Chad. Like, if it's super investor heavy, I'm. I'm sure we're like the worst people right now in the worlds of investing bro circles. Like, this is like basically the evil. <laughs> like, it really is. Like, we're basically yeah. fucking terrible individuals. But it. it 
a lot of people have infiltrated your favorite hobbies and circles that have no shit. They don't care about your. They don't care yeah. about gaming. They don't care about any of your history. They're just trying to like speculate a Mario copy or some crappy yeah. JPEG for quick cash. That's it. That's it. They don't care about the blockchain. They don't give or a the fuck. future, dude. They're only doing it, guys, because the federal government is still lagging on trying to investigate. But they will. Maybe I'm too cynical of an individual, but I think like the fine arts market is kind of exactly the same. Yes, you get a physical, tangible thing, but at the end of the day, if you're looking at a piece of art for its beauty then a photocopy of the Mona Lisa should be worth as much as the Mona Lisa. Like, at the end of the day, what is a rare item? Like, what constitutes value? It's just what someone will buy it. Scarcity. Yeah, scarcity. But it's also a bunch of people saying it's worth something. I mean, is it? I don't know. Well, I mean, if a lot of people say that a crypto punk is worth something, then it's the same idea. Yeah, I don't. That world of high art is one that I hope to never get into. But if the but if the <laughs> sun had a giant solar flare and fried all like in cause like an EMP and just destroyed all electronics across the world, the Mona Lisa would still exist though. That's okay, true. Okay, be yeah. you make good points. And then, but, but money wouldn't, <laughs> fiat currency wouldn't exist either though. I mean, we, there's no, nothing would We have would no exist. record. We have no basis of transact. I yeah. mean, the, listen, but what is happened, this hypothetical? I'm just saying, man, I'm prepared. I got a lot of ammo. Come to me, guys. Really? Come to my, a bit of a a prepper? I'm good. Prepper? I'm a bit of a prepper. I got 80 acres next to a cult. Do you have like a bunker right. though? Wait, do is, have, is that true? Is that true? I do have 80 acres right next to a cult. No shit. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> Dude, I'm asking if you have a bunker, though. You have a bunker, Caleb. Come I got on. a sea can. I could, I could bury. I could. I, my dad's got a skid steer. We could dig a hole, bury that little ventilation. I know where Here. I'm going. Dude. <laughs> That's it, that's, I'm learning Bruh. so much about my good friend every time I do this episode. Like, first time, you're like, I live next to a cult. And I was like, I'm a bit of a prepper. You know, I yeah, like, a little bit. I got like an yeah, undisclosed next, amount of firearms. Next, you're going to find out that he actually runs the cult. He's like yeah. the main guy. He's <laughs> exactly. like off on his own thing, and then he goes down there to run it for a bit and you, comes back. How are you There's not cult. freaked the fuck out living next to a cult? Like, are they like a super serious cult, or is it just like some fucking... You it's know. like a, it's like the type of cult that makes like really healthy foods and sells it. It's oh, not a it's cult. Scary. No, 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 it is. Cult. It is a cult. It is a cult. <laughs> the local police <laughs> told us that it was a cult. They were like, if you were a, if you were a, a, a girl, do not be alone anywhere near this cult. Whoa. Wait, for yeah. really? Legitimately, yeah. It's no joke. Like my uh, realtor there, she was like, make sure your girlfriend is nowhere near this. Like you guys come out here, do whatever you want, but make sure there's like what a never terrible realtor. I mean, I know. in a very good, kind of a good way. I mean, very I guess, honest. but like, oh. but like, yeah, way to yeah. sell that house. By the way, there's a cult <laughs> next door, and your girlfriend <laughs> might die if she's alone. So you want to buy it? Did you use that to talk down the price a little bit? Uh, like, oh, no, I'm it was already gonna... very cheap. It was already very cheap. Oh come on, you could have squeezed out a little bit oh, more. Come on now. It was so cheap. It's good land too. It's very, very fertile land. Very fertile. Very land. fertile. Very fertile. <laughs> that's why the cult. That's why you got to worry for the cult. They're gonna, they're gonna use your land to make more food, <laughs> okay? more seeds and nuts. Yeah, <laughs> think about it, man. Crap. But like you, yeah. you live. You is that is that like a common occurrence though in like Texas? We were in Texas. Like, yeah. There's a lot of land. A lot of land and not a lot of government, so yeah, it's pretty easy to have a cult. Hell yeah, brother! Hell yeah, brother! Texas is like what the largest land mass in the U.S. Like no, next uh, to California, Alaska. Alaska. Uh, continental. Yeah, let's ignore Alaska or for maybe a minute. California. Okay? Yeah, yeah, California is giant. Yeah, I think it is. California and Texas are very close. I think yeah. I know Alaska is number one, but I think Texas is number. Two. And it's just how funny. Three, it's it's know. just funny how different. California and Texas, they couldn't be more different, like just like politically. Oh, yeah, they're opposites. Like, yeah, Texas yeah. is just way better. It really is. But uh, we also have, like, they, they say the Napa Valley is beautiful and it's, you know, dry. The climate's like Italy. It is here too. It's pretty dry and pretty hot. And people grow grapes. Like, one of the biggest things where I live in central Texas is like all these wineries and these yellow bellies from the cities keep moving in. And they keep growing these grapes and making wine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that sounds like exactly where I live, too. That's like where I live in, like, because I used to be, like, 20 minutes out of Toronto. Now I'm, like, and I'm like 40, 50 minutes out. And all we do here is, like, get drunk and make wine. Like, we just mm -hmm. make ice wine every winter. I was talking to one of my buddies. I was like, can we invest in it? And then he was, like, telling me, it's like, do you know how much energy and effort you have to have to grow wine? You have to really, it, like, become one with the culture. I'm like, all right, dude. Okay. <laughs> all right. Bro, they're how serious. Did you guys meet no, they are serious, and Buddha. dude. How did you guys get to know each other? Who? Me and me and Coffee? Yeah, you and Oompi, because you're like the opposite people. How are me and Oompi the opposite and people? Oompi. No, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, like you're you're the you know crypto business like cybersecurity, <laughs> and he's like, I have guns. I live next to a cult. I, have I mean, guns. I have well, a lot yeah, of businesses like, too, though. But, yeah, I have guns. I know it's true, <laughs> but like not on the cyber space. I feel like me and you are opposites, Nux. What? Why? I never watch cartoons. Oh. <laughs> wow. There you go. You just, you just really what? generalized his life. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, just... that's my whole personality, so you got me. I, I know Oompy because he got me, like, hooked into TikTok. Like, I watched a few of them. I was like, all right, I get it. I understand the TikTok Dude, world now. insane. TikTok have is you, have you ever endless seen... content. You know they're, they're, like, winning, right? Big time. I mean, I oh, saw yeah. watch time. I think they're, like, oh. edging up on YouTube. I'll tell you what though. Damn. One thing that they're doing is if you if you're on TikTok and a video is playing and you let's say for example, I haven't done this personally, you fall asleep and the video is playing, if you wake up a couple hours later, that fucking video is still replaying. All right. I don't know what they do. So it's good. that has to be like a, a percentage of their watch time is just from replays cuz they don't ever put a cap on it. Oh, people just yeah. like falling asleep or like just yeah. leaving their phone or yeah. yeah. And that was me. I did do that. I am the I'm the person TikTok's in that story. also in that place where they're not even like that community guideline regulated yet. Because mm -hmm. I feel so, I see, I, dude, I see so much crypto shit on there all the time. It's like, hey guys, we're investing today and pump up those coins. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> well, nuts. I'm one. I so some... I made a TikTok and I was just posting garbage there just to see what would happen. And I got like 250 thousand followers in like a month, and that I got like 10 community strikes in a row. Uh, some were like for nudity. Yo, I got a community strike for terrorism on on on, on TikTok? TikTok. Terrorism. I was like <laughs> reacting to a meme or something. I thought I got Caleb a would be the one terrorism. to get that first. But, don't man, don't yeah, say no, that, no, man. No. The ATF's already looking at me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't even joke about that. You live next to a cult, bro. What do you want me to say? You That's you true. you brought that on yourself. Yeah, bro. Fuck. No, like, but but here here's the thing with TikTok. I found my favorite content on there, and that's the pickup artist content, man. That oh, is my, yo. that's like my favorite side of TikTok. So I've learned so much from those guys. I I was watching one TikTok is the best one. It's like the seven words that you whisper into any woman's ears, and she's just irresistible. <laughs> Instantly I'm like, fall in love with. You. I know. I'm yeah, like, well, what were they? I'm I'm here I with my dad. He, he didn't tell me I need to join dude, a you course. Dude, you have to <laughs> sign up to their course, bro. <laughs> Yeah, pay that words. money, dude. Yeah, he wanted me to like pay for some fucking stupid book, and I was like, "There's no way I'm paying for a book to learn seven words." But then like, I'm sitting there, and then you read the comments to TikTok, and it's just like, "Wow, amazing advice! This is really gonna help me find my <laughs> girlfriend." I'm like, "Dude, you can't be this it's stupid." So sad. <laughs> Does yeah. it feel like TikTok's way less social of a platform? It seems like it's, it's all much all more centered bodded. around like consumption. You know what I mean? It's like I think it's all I bodded. Agree. I think it's all I, I also think there are a lot it's of bots. A lot. Because, like, I uh, talking to people that grew, let's say, on Twitch from a YouTube audience compared to a TikTok audience, the TikTok viewers do not carry over. It's like you can have no. uh, half a million followers on TikTok and have 10 live viewers on Twitch. Right. But like, it just depends on which audience you have on TikTok because there's, like, three people. There's this guy. I forget his name, but he has, like, two or 3,000 viewers on Twitch now. Uh, that he just started on TikTok. There's a girl, call me Chris, who has like gets like 10 million views of video on YouTube, which is insane. Like, and they're 20 minute videos, so it, it carried over very well for her. And she's got a good sense of humor. Like, th these people are talented people. They, it's not like they don't deserve it. They're not just fucking, you know, like fucking dancing to like some song or whatever. Um, by the way, I did that. I got 10 million views. First time I ever danced on TikTok, I, I made up a dance called the clock nay, and I got 10 million views. <laughs> the overnight. Clock, the wait, the clock, clock nay or the clock because clock, it's clock. like a clock. Like oh, counterclockwise. I That's you were my about dance. To go with the Glock nay for a minute. I thought you were dancing with Glocks. You're jo you're joking though, right? I'm not joking. I I have seven hundred thousand followers on TikTok, uh, and I haven't tried. I haven't tried. Wow. I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't tried. I feel like that's how they're getting so many creators. They just go, hey, you want a million followers? Post to our hey, site for a day. I'll, and you're, that you are completely correct, too. They, they do this thing on TikTok. Every new person, if you post videos, let's say you post five, one of those, even if you're irrelevant and you're just like, you know, you're fucking Tom, Dick, and or Harry, right? You're a plumber. <laughs> it will go viral. So one of your smart. videos will go viral. Addicted. Boom, you think oh, you can be a TikToker. No. That's how they do it, I swear. Most of oh. the viewers of TikTok are people who think that they're going to be TikTokers. That's so smart, dude. It's That's genius. diabolical. It truly is.
Dude, is Mark it, Elliott it Zuckerberg really working for them? That sounds like something his dumb brain would come up with, dude. That's right out of Xi Jinping's fucking trade book right yeah. there, buddy. He yeah, goes, but, give, him know, Ubi, give him a taste. Give him a taste. I'm sorry. You go. You went viral because you're already a Chinese celebrity. Fuck you, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Mine doesn't count. Mine doesn't count because I'm very famous. He's like, he's like actually <laughs> unironic. Dude, that's like the weirdest thing. Every time I like, he's like unironically famous in the land of the, in like China and everything. And it's just like, <laughs> I know I can't be because I uploaded way too many pictures of like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. So I'm fucking You're done. immediately black. I'm done. I have like, a I'm following on Billy Billy. I have an actual following on Billy Billy. Chinese is YouTube. The Chinese YouTube. Wow. How'd you get yeah, that? I, I, it's really easy. I'm going to be honest. It's very similar to TikTok. If you learn how to say hello in Chinese, and you upload it to the Chinese platform, viral. Does Mr. Beast know about this? I feel like he'd be number one on B Bing Bing pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's Billy Billy, all right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It's a legitimate I, platform, I legit didn't okay? Know what it's called. Billy Billy, They whatever. value things like free yeah. speech there. Yeah, I'm, I'm the ghost. I'm the white ghost. I'm going to remake all the John Cena, like, Chinese videos and just, like, re-upload them. Bro, like, oh, yeah, God, 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 God. John Cena memes, <laughs> yeah. dude. Wow. I was watching the new Fast and the Furious <laughs> movie, like, the, a week ago with, like, John Cena in it. Yeah. And every time he came in doing martial arts, I was like, oh, my God, we got Chinese agent John Cena coming in to showcase his sick <laughs> martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> I love China. It really is like it's it's. It, I love China, but man, I wish they just opened up a little bit on their uh, freedoms, you know. But uh, that's never yeah. gonna happen. I love the culture. I don't love their their government's kind of lame. Yeah, I I mean like the fact that we've uploaded too much content. That, I mean, this alone will just get us completely banned in China. Let's be fucking completely real yeah, over here. Taiwan. Taiwan is a country. No, <laughs> no, oh. no. Oopies, you're just in China. Out. How can you say that? You're the white ghost. We're cutting that uh, out. Yeah, they don't like me anymore. Cutting that out so China China lets us play. I, I want that yep. to be like a clip upload. We got to tell the editor to just isolate that one <laughs> specifically. It's like Taiwan, Taiwan is a country. <laughs> so, uh, funny story in the more, I mean, this is the opposite of Oompy's Playground. You see, this is in the cartoon world. Uh, there's uh, There was a VTuber that worked with Hololive, the biggest VTuber group, named Kiryu Koko. And she was like looking at her YouTube analytics to see where her most of her um, viewer base was. And she was just scrolling through it, you know, as she would go down. She'd read it, you know, United States, Canada, whatever. And she got to Taiwan. And she's like, Taiwan! And just keeps going like nothing happened. And China went ballistic. Ballistic. They banned her in China. They they sent so much shit to Hololive that Hololive had to, like, kick Coco out of collabs because she was, like, a liability to their company at that point. And she was the biggest earner on YouTube Super Chats in, like, on YouTube at the time. She hmm. popularized Super Chat. How was she even viewed in China? YouTube's not allowed there. Oh, but Ho Ho Hololive was viewed there on whatever stream. Platform. Yeah. They have, like, different platforms. Okay, that makes sense. So it's right. weird to me. How do they, like, know? You know what I mean? How do they know that she said that? How, how does how does it get back? How does it filter back? I mean, you would think that a government wouldn't be able to find all this stuff. I'll tell you something that I've learned from, like, just, di like, going on deep dives in China. Because I really, truly am, like, obsessed with China in a weird way. For, like, years, I've always been a major fan of China and as like things have gotten more don't try and more, to win back with Xi yeah. Jinping you <laughs> already cut yeah. out. listen yeah. don't talk she, about when they said you look like Winnie the Pooh I said I don't see the resemblance all right thank you yeah, <laughs> wow. so, they love but, Taiwan as a real country right yeah Taiwan and strategic ambiguity all right I'm not saying <laughs> yeah. Taiwan's a real country but I do acknowledge that it's part of China, but does Why, China uh, we, we strictly believe that Taiwan is a free and open country. <laughs> yes, I, yeah, 100%. <laughs> There's this guy on YouTube, I don't know if I should mention his name because he's, he's uh, like, people don't like him. A lot of people don't like him. Some people do like him, but... Just go mention him, dude. <laughs> the, it's like, it's this guy, Serpent ZA, okay? So he's like a, he, he oh, used yeah, to live in yeah, China. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's very interesting. He has all these talking videos. He He's very, very anti-China. Talking China. videos? Talking oh videos where he talks in them. It's That's really That's crazy. Weird. It's crazy. I've never seen a video. What a weird kind of content. <laughs> he's always word, using words and talking about Taiwan. He kind of explained that like, if you live in China and you're a foreigner and you do anything that could like potentially upset your social credit, it's more likely that people will just tell on you. Like just citizens of China will tell on you, just your average people. There are people 
who, you know, would be less inclined to to be tattletales and like report stuff to the government. Because if, if you're a foreigner, just in general, if you stay at a hotel in China, that has to be documented with your local police station. Like there's so much control at a micro level and they rely on that by people just telling on you. Like, so your neighbor will tell on you to the local police station. It's like oh, so it's, much control. So I'm assuming that's like how, YouTube. yeah, I'm assuming that's how like the, the, like just simply mentioning Taiwan one person is like, oh, she said Taiwan. And he's like kind of unsure. And then it just goes, and then it goes back to some kind of, you know, regulating body or whatever. One of the things I kind of love about YouTube, or at least older YouTube, is it's kind of a self-policing system. You know? Like, if someone does something terrible, another YouTuber will literally capitalize on calling them out on it. So everyone has to kind of stay in their lane because if you do anything stupid, the commentary channels are going to just... I, I was about to say something with the D word, but, you know, our uh, producer is not a huge fan of it. We're yeah. far enough in now. We'll be all right. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're good. Our, our advertisers don't look this hard in yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Advertisers, they don't know. This isn't China, after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah so nobody's going to kill our social credit, you're right? Yeah. I'm blacklisted. <laughs> well, I just looked at the Serpenza channel, by the way, and, like, you're telling me that a lot of people dislike him? Yeah, dude, it's weird. There's a There are pro-CCP channels, uh on YouTube that like well, actively upload and like I think hate this guy. I think you're full of shit, Caleb, because I just clicked on one of his videos and he has perfect likes. There's literally no, oh, there's no dislikes. On. There's no dislikes oh on my God. Dude, how did he do that, dislike, man? That's my dream. Know. That's crazy. Well, I was clicking on some of your videos, Steven, I didn't see a single dislike at all. I was yes! like, fucking blown away. Him too? Yes! Yeah, insane. dude. This <laughs> guy? Bucks wasn't disliked at all, dude. You didn't yeah, even get canceled, whoa. bro. I no, didn't see honestly, any dislikes. Honestly, we, we should actually talk Talk about the fact that like that whole thing that Nux was just talking about about how it's self policing YouTube removal of dislikes has hugely impacted that. Yes, yeah. uh, that, that's that's why I, I was talking about it in past tense. Hugely, Foolish. like for example, when I got canceled, my video still had like ninety eight percent likes, and I really wanted people to see that. Like I wanted it to be out there that I got canceled and I got absolutely ass blasted on Twitter, but I still had a ninety eight percent like ratio. What did, you, what did you get canceled for? Oh, oh God, here oh we go. Boy. <laughs> sorry, you don't have to. I, I, sorry, I'm not trying to bring it up. Oh, uh, I got canceled for um, exposing a doxer. Oh, this was... I think we talked about this in Discord. Yeah, he tried to do the right thing and fucking whoever he's going up against had the mentality of like a nine-year-old or something going up, man. It was, yeah, just, it, was yeah. a, it was a wild time. It well, was sorry, a, to, a sorry to drag you back into that. You just no, no, tore open those good. wounds, brother. It's all good. Yeah, you just poured <laughs> salt. It, it's so weird. It's been... <laughs> Tell it me about uh, the everyone. worst time of your life here, real quick. It, keeps, that back up it again. keeps coming up. Although, to be honest, like, I, I think I handled myself, like, pretty well throughout the whole thing, but it was stressful. Like, I was not sleeping. <laughs> you were... You did it There should be a consultant though. for that. Like a uh, cancel consultant. Well, I mean, I, I pulled out all the stops. I spoke to everyone. You know, it'd um, be perfect for that. I honestly wish Prank Invasion came back and became the cancel <gasps> consultancy. He'd be a genius. He's a ge yeah. The man's a genius. No, but I, I spoke to everyone. I didn't want to make any rash decisions. Like, I spoke to Muda about it. I spoke to Charlie. We we all escaped that unscathed, too. I, I remember, the like, the first podcast, too, like, I guess maybe I'll throw a mention of it. Like, there were a couple of people It's like, how could you work with Nux? You just cancel. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'll work with my good friends. Who gives a shit? Aww. Like That's all eyes that, of you. That's the that's the one thing that I always like find weird about the internet. It's like you can't be friends with some Oompi is yeah. blacklisted in China. You can't be friends with them. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I mean, <laughs> one thing that I do have to say about getting canceled, you do know who your friends are when that happens. You know, you definitely like, you, you learn who's in your corner. It. Yeah, and it's that's really nice. I was in your corner, Nux. I just didn't know that I needed to be there, but I was there. I I appreciate it, bro. Virtually. <laughs> Same with Oompi. He was like, "You got canceled." I didn't even know, bro. <laughs> that's how good of a friend I am. I was like. Huh? What? <laughs> Wait, what happened? Well, I was open mouth trip. breathing on my my eighty acres across from the cult. You were like, you got yeah. canceled. Fuck, man. You got that canceled. Feels bad. What's that mean? Was it just like a Twitter cancel? That so much so much only happens on Twitter and then nowhere else. Yeah. Like nobody else cares. Well, I mean, it Twitter's did definitely real. spread over to like a lot of other platforms, but it was mostly Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It, it was it was rough. I really um, think uh, some billionaire should just buy out Twitter and just burn it to the ground. I mean, I think that's if where I, we're if at. If I ever have that, that kind of money, Caleb, me and you should split no, on Twitter it. half. So I'll do half just, and half, bro. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get Twitter, but we'll replace every post ever made on Twitter with just Goatsy. 
that's just, psychologically and not just psychological warfare with all that's the, that's why i think like snowflakes. everyone always says like elon musk is the best billionaire i don't believe that if he was the best billionaire in the world he'd do exactly what we were talking about he'd yeah do it he's not yeah, doing he it care. He's not, he's not replacing, like, any of the adult sites with corn hub sites. Like, get out of here, dude. He's not he's worried about the Where's your list. sense of humor? He, uh, yeah, he wants to be an influencer. That's, I think, yeah, his new not, job. It's a new well, job. You see his new said, haircut? That's no, an influencer haircut. haircut. That's, that's he a, looks like a root vegetable. That looks like a ninja haircut, dude. That's, like, the kind of yeah. haircut that's, like, I made too much money, and nobody will yeah. tell me what they think anymore. I, I made too much money, and I have seven kids, or five kids, or however many kids he has. He's got a lot of kids. He's got, like, got how much kids. again? Like, he's, like, $300 billion right now, isn't he? Mm-hmm. It's, Damn, it's something. He's pretty rich. He's super. Yeah, he's a low. No, but he's hilarious though on social media. Like he uh, is funny. I remember. Got to uh, respect it. Name? Jeff Bezos, right? He tweeted something along the lines of how successful he became or whatever, and Elon Musk replies with like a silver medal emoji. <laughs> 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 I didn't know that. That's pretty bad. Ah! <laughs> that is oh, very no. sad. You wow. know, Sanders you know, Jeffy is, is pissed, dude. He's so upset. Yeah. Jeff, oh, Jeff used to so be trailing upset. with Elon, and Elon just he like jumped. It. He's like. 200 billion? <laughs> 300 yeah. in this court, bitch. What are also, you on about? Uh, d- just recently, didn't, um, God, I forget all these people. Bernie Sanders? I, I, I Bernie Sanders! Like yeah, I, uh, Bernie Sanders, he, um, he tweeted something along the lines of, uh, taxing Elon Musk or something, and Elon Musk responds with, uh, How are you still I keep alive, bro? You're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's one of the greatest lines of all time. No, dude, the it's senator like, was better. You guys saw that, right? Where, he, like, the senator said something about, like, this is the problem with, you know, billionaires, et cetera. We got to tax them. And then Elon Musk responds, why does it look like you just come? <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Profile yeah. pics? Yeah. <laughs> and the guy's face was no. like, oh, no. <laughs> Bro, Come I've on. never seen a man get so destroyed, dude. That's the yeah. best part. Like, he can say the most fucked up shit on Twitter. Well, you're going to yeah. cancel a man that has $300 I, billion. Dollars I honestly saw companies. it and, like, audibly gasped. I was like, <gasps> like, I, I just couldn't believe mm-hmm. you could talk to, first of all, a senator that way. And then you're a billionaire and you're going to talk like that on Twitter. Dude, that guy's wilding out. I'm waiting for him yeah, to wilding. retire and Sonny V2 could make a video about how Elon Musk's career died. <laughs> Elon Musk is irrelevant. He's only irrelevant. the richest he man in the world. <laughs> I've seen some good Sonny V2 videos, man. I've seen Same. I think ones. I've seen... Yeah. Uh, I've only I've seen, seen, like... I haven't seen a lot of his videos. I just saw this ninja one because it popped up. They're pretty good. But just, what just sucks, though, kind of, though, too, you ha- kind of have to have negative intent or have, like, some kind of portrait. No one wants to see a video of you praising someone, right? Yeah. You know, or even really acknowledging. They only care about negative stuff. The okay, format's so yeah. difficult. The form that, like, the rise-fall format, you just kind of yeah. got to fit everything into that, like, the, like, oh, he was doing great, and then he sucks. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like every time I watch those Internet OJ videos or whatever, and he's like, the rise and fall of, like... It could be like f- rise and fall of PewDiePie. I'm like, what do you mean the rise and fall? PewDiePie is still dominating. Yeah, dude. still get three million <laughs> like, views per yeah. video, hundred million subs. Yeah, and he's not trying either. Like, if no. you look at PewDiePie's videos, he's just like, okay, I'm retired. 720p I'm just... webcam, dude's a dude's a goat. I mean, that's like I don't even give a fuck about making videos. I just like the best part about the comments on my videos, like, dude, you didn't even fix up your hair. I'm like, I don't fucking have to. Like, I'm just, <laughs> bro, I Muda, just got I, out of bed, bro. I want to be like you so bad, dude. You're, I know, Sam. You're le- like your level of not giving I, a fuck. Yeah, dude. I, it's it's amazing. It's like I'm like I'm like I'm so impressed every time. It's good. You guys I don't like know it. this about Muda. He's like a serious. Well, no, you guys probably do, but the audience. I don't know if the audience knows. Like you're like a serious investor. This guy's like seriously like super smart. Stuff like that. That's what I was surprised, like, first talking to him. I love how you prefaced with, you guys probably don't know this. Muda's actually not an idiot. (laughs) No, no, no. I mean, like, I mean, like, I mean, like, 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 like you talked about finances and stuff. Like, this dude's, like, ten levels ahead. And, like, but then he shows up on his, like, like, streams. He's just, like, he's got the cap on, whatever, just, like, a bro gaming. So, it's, like, it's kind of crazy. You've, like, got, you set yourself up beautifully with YouTube. Yeah, it's impressive. (laughs) I don't know. It's like with YouTube. It's like that's that's why I like that's why I picked these guys as my like co-hosts. Like I know Nux is like really high produced, but like, well, high produced by my standards. But like you know, like you're a VTuber, and like to me that shit like blows me away. I'm like, damn, dude, he's like putting together like game shows, inviting me to like Rule Thirty Four content. Like that impresses me. You know, I'm like, shit. Oh, I'm doing but he's another also- one today. <laughs> Wait, you, you, you got his guess. Oh, you're invited if you want to join. I don't have the full roster. Oh my god, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna see what the schedule is, but. 
Yeah, like when I see it, I'm like, he's a fucking cool guy, Oompy. I'm like, oh, he's just like me. It's like more, you know, he's like, he's a more Texan version of what I would be. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what it comes down to. Like, I, I don't mean, know. I feel. Hey, like- let's not forget that at the first time all three of us were in a video together, we were watching hentai. We really were. Like we were watching just. That that was a that was a that was a vibe, but but that's the thing. Like I feel like if you put that much effort into YouTube, like I know Coffee puts like a lot of effort. Like his video quality is out there, but he's also like there's a personality that I like, and that's the thing with YouTube. It's like if you got a personality, it's like that's what people are gonna latch on to. Like nobody's gonna watch your video because it's like ah oh, it like looks really nice, and it's what dude you can go right. to, like a million other channels and do it, but it's like if your personality is not there, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Personality is king when it comes to this stuff. When I get to laugh at NFTs and, like, the NFT bros cry, I'm like, good. <laughs> you should feel bad for buying a shitty, like, crypto wolf. Dude, I don't care. Ah, uh, it's so weird. Yeah, do you guys, I mean, here's the thing. I think NFT technology will be still be around. I think it will become something valuable. I think it just has to be tied to something more, um, how do you say, like tangible too, like like outside. I think the coolest projects I've seen right now that I think are going to last beyond just like great artists maybe making their work on NFTs, it's going to be like, you know, like having it tied to an event, having it tied to an access pass, having it tied to some kind of club or something that you can get into. Um, I think it's the, like the things that actually tie your NFT to something that's more than just the NFT thing that's going to make it yeah. good, like good. Because ultimately, NFT yeah, is I like agree. a tool. It's like a, it's not the end product in of itself. It never has been. It's not where the value is. It's what like what it gets you into. I yeah, feel like that's what it the, could yeah. enable. Like like if you just imagine like in the future you have a digital wallet tied to you, right? So anytime you want to sign, instead of having to like go sign your identity or whatever, you could just like log into your wallet, click a button, and it digitally signs it with an NFT like version of your signature. So it's like, okay, that clearly authenticates that that was a real transaction or something like that. So you can see right. contract tracks getting replaced. You can get, see all sorts of futures where this, this technology gets used. And that's just like the most basic way. But it's like, dude, this whole like, it's just such a cash grab. It's just a bunch of Gary V bros being like, how do mm-hmm. I underpay an artist on Fiverr to go ahead and like make Use me a millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> XOXO. Yep. This is in but, hugs. but like, think about it. Like, what if we did like an NFT for, for this podcast? I'm not saying that we will. Don't fucking kill right. us for it. But it's just like, hypothetically, if we had like 10 NFTs that we minted, right? And it's like, those 10 would allow you to join this Riverside and like hear this live. I feel like there are some podcasts like I watch that I fucking pay for that. You know, I'd like right, like like I, I do that for a Joe Rogan podcast. Well, so yeah, like, to, like it ties you to access. That's, that's what people are trying. That's like that's actually what V Friends is. That's Gary V's thing. He's trying to tie it to his like shows and stuff. And then uh, yeah, isn't this just like a cooler version of Patreon? Like you know. If you become my patron, you could join my patron Patreon Discord server or whatever. It's a lot yeah, like that. Tier, value, yeah. But Patreon like can't kick concept. you off. Like Patreon right now, they have all their terms and guidelines. They watch you. They they can kick yeah. you off. Right, they can kick you off, yeah. Well, it's like okay, people I'm who make adult content, right? Like, but like it's not do you make adult fact. content? Sorry, I was just like, you make adultish content, right? That you wish you yeah, could like kind of release? Do you wish like you could have a platform and a way for you to monetize it without like... I could always go the OnlyFans route, I guess. That's true, but then they'll make a terms of service, bro, and fucking kick you off. Remember what I happened earlier? I can go earlier? the Fansly route. There's a million more of them. But then they'll make another TOS, and then they'll fucking kill <laughs> okay, you. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Nuxtaku.com. Dude, you should get Nux coin. Nux NFT, dude. Mint. <laughs> so I have had people obviously reach out to me to make Nux coin for me, but I did not fix that. I'm sure you've gotten Muda coin as well. I have. What's the highest offer you've all have ever gotten? Because I know everyone's gotten an NFT minting deal here. Everyone gets it. Embryos get it. Which, what's your highest deal that you guys have ever gotten? Like, uh, I never, I don't think I ever got a price. I think they always say, well, like, name a price. And That's we'll what I was going to say, too. They always say, what's your rate? Yeah. That's what they That's always what say. I've never gotten an actual price. What'd you though? get, Muda? Come on, I know you got something, if you're going to ask uh, the question. I, I probably saw somewhere on the lines of, like, I'll be real, like, 40, 50 grand. Yeah. Like, 40, insane, 50 dude. grand is God what damn, I got. That's like a couple of Raid Shadow Legends. That's that's a, that's a few Raid Shadow Legends ones right there. But when I saw... Because I saw the price tag, and I was like, 40, 50 grand. And then, like, I feel like for most, like, the influencers, like, and this is going to sound like a fucking flex, I guess, but, like, for influencers, right, like, 40, 50 grand, that's like a fucking... 
that's like half a year income, more than half, you know what I mean? Like for a lot of people in the, in the creator mm -hmm. space. So it's like, I can probably see why people jump on and just promote the fuck out of shit coins for 50 yeah. grand. Okay, but you're, they're only offering you 50 grand because you're in a, I mean, because your advertisement is valued at that rate for them. I mean, Aiden Ross yeah. is not this, you know, he's not making just 40 grand a year. No, no, but like, think about it like this too, right? Like if they gave 50 grand to, there's a lot of people in my position that get the same views and subscribers on my channel that probably don't have the same financials, you know? It's like, because they're not investing, they're probably just like, whatever money comes to them, they don't save it. They're just like, ah, oh, I can buy a fucking Lamborghini. Let's fucking do that. Ah, oh, man, let's buy let's that. Go yeah, right? Like, you, dude, you, you, you get a lot of people in this sphere in like YouTube that are like, they're dog shit with money. You know, like you talk about it, it's like, Oh, I just made $100,000 this month. I just burned $100,000 on fucking what? Like, what did you... Well, I mean, I, I was <laughs> forced to not burn any money because YouTube didn't pay me for, like, four years. There's a silver uh, lining. Doing... God God came in and intervened and said, all right, I'm going to teach you finance, like, advice nuts. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm happened. Gonna, I'm going to put you on hard mode first. <laughs> then you get easy oh, mode. God. But, like, dude, we get, like, it's the same thing with, like, because we just covered Steve, okay? And, like, I... Dude, I used to think Steve was like I, everyone I talk to regarding Steve is not very kind talking about this man's intellect, right? But like when we found out how much he earned and then how much he spent, we're like, "Damn, <laughs> dude's insane, bro!" So dumb. It, it's it's. I think it's a disease of the influencer mind where you think that like, okay, you blow up, you start making a little bit of money. And there's an expectation that it's just going to last forever. The gravy train's never going to stop. And the reality is this. You think you're really original. You think you're never going to fall off. Everyone falls off. Every the, We're more yeah. like we're more like no NBA players Simpsons. than we are like real like career people. I mean, it's like people fall off. They lose relevance. People get disinterested. The best can pivot. But the reality is most people don't. And most people end up, you know, having to make do with whatever they made in the short time that they were popular, whatever. So when I see Steve like blowing all his cash, I mean like the dude sent me bank statements and it's like, he's got no money, even though he's making like so much. I mean, we're talking seven figures a month in some cases. And it's like, he still has zero in savings. It's like, dude, in 10 years, do you think you're going to be as relevant, right? When your whole brand is like being a party bro, you think it's going to be cool when you're like 35 partying like no. that it's like you got to save that it's almost sad i felt i like even when i was making the video i was like dude this is like i'm, I'm almost sad for the guy i was like you gotta need some friends i, I know with you. youtube careers like with youtube careers i know like i i know that like no matter what even if i fall off it'll still be enough like if i was to be making a living off youtube i could still make it continue but it's like you, nobody wants to do youtube like that you know nobody wants to do youtube like the day-to-day -day grind you know like for me, I always do want it to be the hobby. So that's why, like, I have to find a million other ways to, like, park my cash and, like, have it, you know, snowball for me. Because, like, that's the thing. Like, if you if you rely on YouTube and, like, you're literally just doing content to make cash, oh, that's just fucking terrible. Like, then you never get to have fun and do what you want. Like, I upload a video, like, I remember the video yesterday. YouTube's, like, 8 out of 10. But I love making that video. Like, I don't give a fuck what YouTube says, you know. It's like, it can be an 8 out of 10. I don't care. You still put it on trending. It doesn't matter. But then, like, the day before, it's like the video I made is like half a million views. So I'm like, oh, that makes up for it. Whatever, dude. It's like, you got to stop looking at YouTube and, like, that day-to-day -day grind and just kind of go and have fun with the content you make. And it is what... Because some videos will do it, some videos won't. They'll pop and they won't pop off. I, I completely agree with you, even on a content level. Like, if you're just doing the day-to-day -day grind, like, thinking about the next big thing every single time, then your content is going to suffer from you not having fun with the video, too. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying making your content, your fans will know that, and they will not want to watch you anymore. That's yeah. so true. Like, with this NFT stuff, I love shitting on it. I don't care if the video does well or not. <laughs> I love shitting on Ubisoft. It's the fucking greatest thing in the world, all right? God, do you know, I like making porn Do you, right, do anyway. you know how happy I felt that morning when, like, the when I saw GTA Definitive Edition on Twitter? Dude, I was like a kid at a candy store. I was like, this dog shit launched this bad? Wow. And when Cyber... Dude, I was the longest waiter for Cyberpunk 2077. I was like, man, 
before my channel started, I was like, I can't wait to play this game. I saw that teaser trailer. A month before that game dropped on Twitch stream, I was like, this game's going to suck dick. Like, it's, it's going to fall off. Like, it's probably not going to be that heavy. Because when you sh look at the graphics for a game and then you're like, oh, you're releasing it on a PS4 from, like, 10 years ago? Ooh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also on the PS5. Yeah, a little time. questionable. Yeah. And then when I found out they weren't sending the copies out or they weren't, that's, like... That's red flag number one. That's like Santa Inc. You know, Seth Rogen and Sarah Silverman do not want this show watched before it releases. So when it drops and it's a dog shit port, oh, I was like, part of me was like disappointed, but I was like, man, this is this is the best content farm I've ever seen, dude. Just rip there's off. There's a beauty game. in the chaos of it all. <laughs> it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. Watching. Look, when you watch two trains crash, you just can't pull your eyes away, you know? They may have accidentally made a masterpiece with Cyberpunk. They did. But Dude, it's like a Reddit, masterpiece failure. The Reddit board was so full of copium that whole week. They're like, oh, I know it has a million bucks, but it's not bad. It's like watching just like the saddest groups of like people try yeah. to defend this shit. Imagine. Now, I have a there question, was, Ruta, because yeah. I may be the longest waiter on Cyberpunk in that I still haven't played it. Uh, I'm still waiting. <laughs> I keep waiting to like hope. I'm hoping they no man sky it where they like make it good eventually. Is that going to happen? Do I need to keep like. No, nah, they, uh, they won't. They won't because like no man sky was already like a frame. It was like a shell of a game. You know, it's like there's no story really to it. It's like yeah, you it fly terrible. around and do whatever. Right. But then like you can add on to that. Right. When there's nothing, there's no like there's no like story driven component. You can add whatever you want. Hmm. But like. In Cyberpunk, it's like, we know it was supposed to be, like, a beginning, middle, and an end. You play it, it's like, they can't just change the story. They can't, like, redo Keanu's role. They can't, like, right. make it better. So it's like, sure, you can clean up some of the bugs. But, bro, when your game doesn't even have police chases in it, in 2020, 2020 you're pretty yeah. ba bad. 2027, you're right. 2077. 2077, yeah. Yeah. I remember, like, dude, the best was the Crop Cat video when it came out, because you did the comparisons of the gameplay of cyberpunk when he got to the lego city undercover i died that guy's like, a genius when... that guy's yeah he like literally showed <laughs> lego city has better ai mechanics than, oh. than cyberpunk i saw that i like literally died inside i'm like there's no way this motherfucker went there reject and then... modernity embrace tradition Dude, Roblox. the best the best was all like the weird rando gaming uploaders who were like Cyberpunk 2077 compared with Raid Shadow Legends on mobile. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's like no, you no. can't do it. Well, all right. Well, then I ah, oh, that's sad. That makes me sad. No, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't jump into I would probably say that you should just give up hope right now. I know there's a lot of copium in the Reddit. They're always like it'll get updated with the next gen patch. Yeah. Dude, there's no way that the gra the graphics are not saving the game. It already looks good. That doesn't make it a good game. Yeah, like, it just seems like CD Projekt Red with all the titles they have under their belt. Like, how could they mess it up this bad? Right. It's, it's not like this is some amateur studio. It's like this is a seasoned studio that has done some of the greatest games. How could... I, yeah, it's just I, I love I loved when they were like fucking people were like is CD Projekt Red as big as Rockstar? I'm like yeah pr yeah they are actually they're pretty huge. <laughs> so there's no like there's no, and even Rockstar nowadays it's like well we'd rather keep updating GTA 5 for like ten years in a row and then maybe maybe you'll get a GTA 6 announcement. Who fucking who knows what the reality there is? But then again, are they really going to be making games when nobody can get a modern console anymore? Like. I don't know. That's crazy. Do you guys know any of the insider stuff on like chip shortages and when that's no. going to settle? I mean, because no, I saw, I... I saw, who was it? Uh, the GeForce or whoever, the graphics card, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, just yeah. re released like a, an old graphics card. Yeah. Like the 2060. No way. The, the 2060 or the 30. Or, wait, no. They, I just saw it like on Linus Tech Tips. And it was immediately, check this out, it was immediately scalped. <laughs> They go, hey, we're gonna re-release for all you guys, and it was immediately sniped by bots. As for the uh, like the chip shortages and stuff, though, if if Taiwan doesn't, no, all jokes aside, if Taiwan doesn't remain a free country, they'll they'll be never ending. The chip shortages will be never ending for the free world. Yeah, because that's where Taiwan's, most of our chips are created, anyways. Taiwan's TSMC. We've gone full circle. <laughs> you really have. Everything ties back to that fucking island nation, doesn't it? It's a ring. No, speaking yeah. of Taiwan, though, I saw an amazing. Uh, so the VTuber I mentioned, Coco, that uh, she ended up leaving Hololive, 
Um, and she, well, now there is a new VTuber because you don't retain the rights to your model or name or anything if you leave Hololive. Um, so Kason, a completely new VTuber, by the way, that happens to sound exactly like Coco. She was, she was reading an article on her stream and, uh, it said, well-known VTuber Kiryu Coco popularized the super chat. And then she like looks at the screen and winks. <laughs> it's like the Obama putting the metal on himself meme. You know that <laughs> That's classic. By the way, I just looked it up, Muda. They re-released the 2060. Yeah, the 2060? From years ago, you know, from years ago, the GeForce RTX 2060 just got re-released with a little, little extra VRAM. Like, that's oh. where we are with the chip shortage, is we're going back in time. Oh, I just read the fucking post on Notebook Check. Ew. Ew, that is disgusting. What graphics cards do you guys have right now? Me? I have a 3090 and I have 6900 XT in the rig. What about you, Coffee? 3060. Or 30, maybe, maybe I, have I think no I have a 3070. Idea. Uh, let me look. Nox, come on. What do you mean you have no idea? Do you have a, do you have a start button? Yeah. Okay, go to start and type in the <laughs> word DX Diag. Okay, so I'm actually on my laptop right now. Uh, we're going to have to ask him later. Fuck that. If you will ask me later, I will tell you. He's probably got one of them M's, one of them mobile cards. Dude, don't say I'm that. I'm so bad at tech. Until I had like 400,000 subs on YouTube, I was uh, I was using an old Mac with no mouse. I got a 2070 Super. Okay, so this is old. 2070 Wait. Super is not bad. I mean, nobody's good, getting yeah. that card, though. No, nobody's getting access to that one. I got lucky buying this graphic card. I went to the store and I saw the 6900 XT. I was like, I'm going to buy that card right now. You like gave me the retail price? Dude. I was the happy. I was like a kid at a candy store. I, I'm gonna keep saying that no matter what. I was like, dude, you get you have a graphic card available. I mean, there's no like no 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 joke. Yeah, no jokes, no nothing. That's crazy. And then he saw, and then like there was all these other graphic cards were already like scalped by everyone who like came into the store. We like want that, want that, and he just had it on the shelf. I'm like, I'm grabbing it and I'm running away with it. Most of uh, the chip shortage, a lot of it's caused by mining. I don't know if you guys, you guys probably yeah. know that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like, that's like, speaking of full circle. Ironically, what yeah. sold out the most at the store was a 1600 watt PSUs for the mining rig. So. <laughs> that's actually pretty funny. Right when, right when the 3090 released, I got one. Like, as right as all the problems started to come down, I was pretty lucky to get to get one for retail price. You got it before the nukes dropped, man. Now we're living yeah, but in a post Two display world. ports are bad on it. So I'm not sure. Can you RM? Oh, dude, I don't know if you can RMA because it'll take uh, like six can't. months. Yeah, you can't. Well, especially not for this uh, rig. But I have another one uh, with a 3070 that I use for like re rendering stuff and have as a backup. <sighs> well, boys, this has been a fun second episode. But Wait, we before hit, like... we go, I got one more thing to say. I just want to read this real quick. I just saw it. Stan Lee, who's dead, just released mm -hmm. a tweet oh, where nice he's... Money! Where he's selling an NFT. So the guy's dead and they're still using his corpse no. to shill an Jeez. NFT oh for uh, Chakra the Invincible. He debuts his own Chakra. NFT collection. Seven thirty. Dude, well, there you go, that's guys. So that's sad. a good way to... <laughs> I just thought that might wrap everything up in a nice little bow. Wow. I can't believe Stan Lee literally came back from the grave, the grave to sell dude. us an yeah. NFT. Resurrected. I'm going to buy it, actually. He's a dead I'm going to mint it. My man pulled a Goku. Dude, this literally proves. This literally just proves that NFTs are the greatest inventions ever made. They brought back Stan Lee from the. God, I can't believe it's so bad. Oh, I'm gonna shit on this today. I can't wait. His soul wasn't willing to get up, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Stan, you don't know how much money this is." And they start waving in front of the grave, and then he he rose from the dead. Oh my God, guys, no way. I, can I, I? I think I can test the screen sharing thing out with this today. Hold on, guys. Before we go, we have. I have to show you how sad this is. Look at how disgusting <laughs> this page is. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yes, dude. Enter the Chakraverse based upon characters and stories co-created by Stan Lee. Hi, everybody. I died recently, <laughs> and I'm releasing an NFT. Well, <laughs> oh, you have to make it Indian too. Stop it! Don't, don't do it. <laughs> this is it. Loot Look box. at it. Oh. <laughs> oh my god! Those are you fucking embarrassing! <laughs> oh my god! Oh, holy just, shit! It, it's Stan Lee! They literally used his face! How could what they do the this? What the fuck? Limited edition, two animated? Oh my Those god. Those profile pictures are actually 
garbage, dude. Yeah, those are the worst. That's some of like, the worst. They could do so much better. Comic drawing I've ever seen. Oh, I just found the video that they used, guys. It's from 2013. Man, they ah, couldn't. They sense. literally dug a video out from nearly a damn decade ago just for this uh, poor. Let band. him rest, dude. Let him rest. He's done enough. He's a legend. I feel like his state should sue these people. I would. If I ever died and somebody used me to show. Oh, an we're NFT, using you to sell NFTs. Oh, you better believe oh, it. I will, yeah, oh, for no. sure. At least make the art good. Like, pay somebody on like. Oh uh, yeah, I got, an, I got an artist. <laughs> I got an artist on this retainer. Is, I'll, I'll, I'll pay her. This is so bad. Can we have this as a thumbnail? <laughs> Just this. That's all I want. Oh, so terrible. Oh. You're a simple man. <laughs> I really am a simple man, but that's so bad. Audience, thank you for tuning in for the second episode of Some Ordinary uh, Podcast with uh, me, Mudahar, and my good friends, Nux and Caleb, who you can follow them. And I'll let everyone do their, uh, I'll let everyone do their shill bidding right now. So go ahead, boys. Go ahead. Go for it. Let's start with you, Coffee. Guys, Coffeezilla here in the very real, very legit $2 million studio. I just want to remind everyone that despite what Caleb may slander me with, uh, that it is real. So, uh, yeah, I guess you guys probably know where to find me. Caleb, go ahead. Tell us about your cult again. I'm going to be honest. I don't think, I'm not sure it's real, just to be clear. But uh, my, my background, <laughs> my background is real. So, and it's worth probably 50 bucks, maybe. There's about Test it. Shoot, yeah. shoot, shoot into the wall with this. Shoot in the wall with your comically large revolver. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta show coffee that. Where is it? Where's my revolver at? Yo, he, he oh, lost it. He lost his gun. Oh no! But damn. Uh, no, it's okay. Yeah. Don't worry. He has no Go ahead, Nux. I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't. I think we the might Colt have to cut that it. part the out. The Colt got it, dude. Yeah, we might have to cut <laughs> that part out. You uh -oh. already got the ATF. Oh, <laughs> shit. They don't want to know your. This is what this is what fight. gun safety looks like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, there it is. <laughs> the poster child for gun safety, Caleb, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Yay! There it is. Oh, yep. That's aw Yeah, that's hilarious. That's awesome. What caliber is that again? It's a twenty-two. Oh my god. Damn. Gosh. Little baby gun. There's no way that you could like even shoot yourself with that. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. You have to have like long ass Yo, arms to like, fucking get it. If you're, if you're a parent in Michigan, <laughs> no, we're cutting off. Fuck that. Anyway, well, guys, anyways, got it, got we'll it, got it. You. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're out. Take care and uh, have a good one.